All right, guys, I have to be honest with you and admit that I was wrong about Bitcoin's stock to flow model. You know, the one that predicted 100,000 to 200,000 and huge all time highs in 2021. Now, I believe this so much that I made several videos about it, like you see up here. And I encourage you to watch those for context if you don't already know what I'm talking about. But essentially, stock to flow is a model of Bitcoin's price in relation to its scarcity, kind of claiming that there's a direct relationship between the two. This model gained a lot of popularity and debate in 2019 and 2020 when Plan B or 100 trillion USD is his Twitter handle released it to the world back then. But now new arguments came out that were different than the ones before that have convinced me to not believe in it anymore. And even some of the early proponents of it also changed sides, which is good because that means people are being intellectually honest. So that's a good thing that we should all strive for. So just a really quick overview of what is stock to flow model for Bitcoin. I'm going to put a chart up here. You can just take a look at you've probably seen it before, but essentially it's a model for predicting and explaining Bitcoin's price in relation to its scarcity or more specifically to its emission rate, which is the amount of new Bitcoin that's being mined. And you know how that changes per every halving, right? And also to the current amount available, which means like all Bitcoin out there in circulation. So that's the stock to flow ratio, emission rate versus current amount available. And that ratio changes over time. And the model is saying that Bitcoin's price is related to that. So initially they're like, okay, it's correlated. But a lot of things are correlated, right? Like Bitcoin's price and avocado prices are correlated. But that's not the only thing. It's also co-integrated. Follows something called co-integration, a statistical property that makes it much more likely to not be some random correlation or coincidence, right? So they proved co-integration between the two variables before, which means there is a direct relationship between stock to flow ratio and Bitcoin's price. So that was amazing, right? Back in the day, everyone was giving critiques and arguments based on theory or logic, but no one had anything to say about the raw stats. That's why I was on team stock to flow before. But now in the past few months, new analysis came out against it from a very statistical and mathematical perspective, and that has gotten me to change my mind. So let's just very briefly touch on a few reasons why I think stock to flow won't work anymore. And I also will include great links down below that I did my research with and encourage you to go check it out. Shout out to everyone like Eric Wall, Marcel Berger, Fraudsta, everyone who posted analysis and deep research about this. So number one is co-integration doesn't work and doesn't hold anymore because there's some very deep statistical reasons why. Essentially everything in the model hinged on co-integration being true. And just a quote that is really important I want to read out to you is that in order for two variables to be co-integrated, we require two time series with an equal order of integration. Long story short, with people's further research into the stats and mathematics behind this, that is not the case for S2F, their stock to flow, and price. They are different orders integration and hence the co-integration argument breaks down and the whole original S2F model breaks down. Also number two is there are a lot of other stats models and methods that have really serious errors, right? So Fraudsta or Bitconometric writes, first of all, the proposed ordinary least squares model is shown to be seriously deficient due to a serial correlation in the residuals. He also tried the angle Granger method is not usable as a test for co-integration due to the requirements for the test not being met. And that's similarly the case for another method he tried out called the Johansson method. Finally, he builds an autoregressive distributed lag model or ARDL, and it does not falsify the stock to flow relationship. Basically, he concludes throughout this very long article that many tests have been shown to be incorrect or have serious errors. And thus their hypothesis is that stock to flow does not have an important non-spurious influence on the USD price of Bitcoin and they have not been able to reject that, which means that that's potentially the case, that it does not have a direct relationship. It's a little bit weird to think this way because it's flipped, but you have inverted 
hypothesis and then you look to reject that. That's how the stats tests work. And then lastly, Plan B or the original author who popularized this came up with the S2FX model that was kind of a new one that potentially tried to gloss over the downfalls or detriments of the original model. I'm not going to dive too deep into this, but I'll give you an overview and share with you why I'm not too convinced on that either. Essentially, he pulls in silver and gold stock to flow relationships, their price into a cross asset model. And so he has a lot of clusters of different price points over the life of Bitcoin as it goes from payments to medium of exchange to store value and to different types of evolved assets, right? And claims that in the future, it can go up to similar price clusters for silver and gold that relate to its stock to flow ratio, which is currently higher than Bitcoin's and hence predicts that Bitcoin can go even higher to like 288,000 per Bitcoin in 2021, 2022 per se. But I've also read some other very convincing analysis showing that there's no relation between gold's value, like its overall market cap and its stock to flow ratio over the past 150 years. So this is all included in the first article I linked down below. So go read it, make your own decision on if you still agree with stock to flow or you're on the other side. Also, I just want to say a quick thank you to my patrons at crypto.com. Been supporting us for a long time. And recently, if you haven't downloaded their app here, crypto.com mobile app, they added the recurring buy. So you can automate your Bitcoin purchases on a weekly, bi-weekly or monthly scale. A great way to stack sats. And you could check it out with my referral link below and my other videos I've made about how the app works, how I use the debit card all the time. And yeah, check it out. So lastly, I still want to say that I'm bullish on Bitcoin, very bullish, actually. It's my biggest asset, and there could still be some relation between price and scarcity, right? But just not with the original S2F model that looked oh so great in late last year and early this year. But just to remind you of other macro factors that could drive Bitcoin's massive appreciation, right? Like there's this massive printing of fiat currency around the world. That's a global movement. There's many people all around the world that Bitcoin's capturing their heart and soul. It's digital first, which just makes it easy to move around and feels natural to the younger generations. That's an amazing track record since inception in terms of price action, and it becomes more and more anti-fragile by the day. Finally, there's more tech and infrastructure improvements that makes it easier to use and adopt as time goes on. So I want to know your thoughts about this really juicy topic. Do you still agree with S2F stock to flow model? If so, why? Also, please support me by liking, subscribing down below, hitting that notification bell, and I will catch you guys next time.